Welcome. <laughs> Go ahead, Gary. All righty. Well, welcome everybody to Nika and Brand Night. Uh, my co-host, Sherry Danzig, and I would extend a warm welcome to you. And uh, these presentations are designed to introduce you to the Nikan brands to make healthy choices for yourself and your family. And with that, I'm just going to turn it over to Sherry to introduce uh, Dr. John Jackson, our speaker for this evening. Wonderful. Thank you, Gary. And if you haven't heard Dr. John Jackson speak before, you're in for a treat. I'm going to just read a little bit of <clears throat> an introduction so you know who is speaking to you tonight. So he's a native of the state of Missouri, and he got a BS in chemistry from U uh, UCLA. And then he went to work for a biotech company, which is interesting. I'd not heard that. And then later, of course, medical school at Georgetown, at George Washington, excuse me, University. And then he was became an internal medicine, um, did his residency at UCLA. So he's board certified and a fellow of the American College of Physicians. And then back in uh, 2006, he left a 25 year private practice with his focus on diagnosis and management of disease. And now he and his wife, Annette, are full-time wellness educators, and they live in Santa Cruz, California. So we are so thrilled to have you, Dr. Jackson. Please take it away and tell us about sleep. Fantastic. And uh, thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Professor Gary. And uh, all of those joining us on uh, the Zoom call tonight, uh, what a privilege to talk about an, a subject so important for health and that's sleep. Are we going to use the uh, PowerPoint presentation or? Uh, yes. The slide? Okay. Yes. Do you want Dr. Gary to do that for you? Yeah, please. If I just say next, that would help advance this. That'd be fantastic. Sure. So maybe just going directly to slide three would be fantastic. He wants you to go to slide three. Appreciate that kind introduction. You know, science sometimes confirms our conjectures. Other times it surprises us. Researchers have observed sleep contributes to our health longevity, health and longevity, as much or more than diet, exercise, and heredity. What a surprise to many. So let's discuss how sleep is so vital to our health. Next one. Take a moment to reflect on how you slept last night. There's a difference right after a good night's sleep versus a restless one. And is your battery fully recharged on awakening? Are you ready to jump into the day's activities? Next. The uh, CDC Centers for Disease Control calls insufficient sleep quantity or quality a public health epidemic. And uh, the World Health Organization, WHO, agrees on a global level, sleeplessness is uh, epidemic. And of late, we've learned about an allied term quite a bit, how many pandemic. Next slide. Now, here we see that less than eight hours for sleep is pretty common. We have a, a list of countries and their stats listed uh, and research indicates sleeping less than eight hours each night or poor quality sleep has been associated with many risks. You can see the domino effect across the bottom of the screen if you're viewing this. Fatigue, heart disease, weight gain, diabetes, anxiety, stroke, kidney disease, cancer, nothing attractive or appealing, right? Next slide. Now, poor sleep contributes to brain dysfunction. How's your memory, for example? And how about a 70% drop in your immune defenses after a single night's battle with insomnia? Taking that into account, maybe it's e easier to comprehend a linkage between poor sleep and cancer, not to mention detriments, detrimental effects on cardiovascular health, blood pressure, et cetera. Next slide. So what's going on with inadequate sleep? such a common problem with so much at stake. Let's try the next slide and see if we can delve into this, dig into a little deeper. Let's look at what goes on in a normal night's sleep, which is healthy. There are five cycles ranging from 90 to 110 minutes. 
So if we do five of 90, that's uh, 7.5 hours, approaching the ideal of eight hours or more. And each cycle has five stages, both the cycles and the stages important for our health. In that first uh, stage, uh, it's the border five to 10, 15 minutes between consciousness and sleep. In the second stage, the heart rate slows. Uh, the brain attempts to complete its appointed task of converting temporary memories into permanent files, to use the computer analogy. And then in the next stage, the body makes repairs. You'd probably consider that pretty important, wouldn't you? I would. And in the next uh, stage, body temperature uh, declines and blood pressure relaxes. The fifth and final stage of each cycle, we see an increase in rapid eye movements, dreams, heart rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure, and temperature rise back up to their baselines. Next slide. Now, what wakes us up or prevents us from sleeping? If you'll permit me just a personal anecdote, I once had occasion to travel with a colleague and at the motels and hotels where he stayed, it was his nightly habit to leave the television on uh, with the sound up, kind of a pacifier for him, but actually detrimental to my sleep. On the right hand of the slide here, we can see other more common perhaps impediments to good sleep and that would be we can't relax, we're uncomfortable, the temperature's outside a comfortable range, uh, we've been resting too long in a spot that's kind of heavy, maybe our breathing is impeded in some fashion, our head's uh, too warm, and that, that's distinguished from hot-headedness, a different issue. Next slide. <laughs> now, heading in a better direction, uh, how could we obtain quality sleep and quantity and quality? Sleep that's sound, that's deep, that's restful, that's rejuvenating. All that's very attractive for me. And uh, what an interesting quote from Sophocles out of the 5th century BC. Sleep is the only medicine that gives ease. Uh, this is the case. It stands to reason lack of sleep or poor sleep gives disease. Okay, disease. Next slide. Now, I guess headed in a better direction, we might ask the question, how could we obtain sleep that's more like what nature intended? And the short answer is Kinko Nature S Fit Sleep System. A system to sleep? What's that? And how does it work? Let's go over the technologies uh, that are involved in this system. Top left, magnetic technology replicates the natural energy of the earth. The system provides orthopedic support for all body types, all body parts. There are massage nodules that offer massage as we roll or move during sleep. There is reflective technology to keep that temperature in an ideal range, a comfortable range. Tourmaline with the negative ion production facilitates relaxation. And please keep in mind, these are environmentally responsible and safe materials. And as uh, stated, Kinko's Nature Rest Sleep System is designed and engineered to promote quality sleep. Next slide. So we have previously gone over factors that disturb our sleep. We can't relax, we're tense, we're uncomfortable, the temperature is outside a normal range, uh, too heavy on one spot, breathing impediments, our heads too high, and the technologies that, uh, the medley of technologies that Kinko's Nature S Fit system include the magnetic, the tourmaline, bioceramic, reflective fibers, breathable fibers, massage nodules. So pretty amazing. So next slide, rather than repeating in even greater and deeper detail all these different matters we've already kind of covered, my recommendation is you actually get with the person who invited you to this presentation and, and thank them. And uh, I wanna thank you, next slide, and I'd like to invite you to be uh, part of our group if, uh, if uh, the water or temperature sounds or seems good to you, swim in our pool. We, we're part of a global wellness community we want to share information with folks seeking better health. Doesn't the whole world want to have better health? But many people don't know about what we've discussed concerning sleep and its importance. There are many other vital factors for, for health. So thank you, and please consider our invitation to join us. Next slide. For those people still wanting to learn more, especially those who are visual learners, in the next slide we see a QR code, top right, that'll take you to a DVD-like 
presentation, How Do You Connect With Nature? If those who'd like to have something in writing, you can download a PDF copy of a magazine, How Do You Connect to Nature? Put your uh, phone, scan that QR code bottom right. So Sherry and Professor Gary, I hope that uh, we've covered this important subject matter, at least in outline fashion, and left time for uh, our guests, uh, folks on the call tonight to ask any other questions they might have, and we'll do our best to field those. Well, I'm going to jump in here and ask you, um, John, if you will share about um, what drew you, because I want to hear your personal story. I want you to share that. Because here you were trained as a medical doctor, and I know for a fact that they didn't teach you about magnets and infrared and natural technologies in medical school. So what did it for you that you were willing to, first of all, take a look at the products, and secondly, dedicate your your career to being a wellness consultant and not a doctor? Yeah, thank you, Sherry. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, let's start at the start, start at the beginning. Uh, uh, my wife and I were living in a town in the Pacific Northwest. She wanted our children to learn about music and uh, to seek better instruction. Uh, youth orchestra, she would drive each uh, month down to the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area. And at one stoplight, uh, having crossed the San Rafael Bridge, she was hit from behind. <clears throat> from behind. The driver was estimated by police to be doing about 50, 55 miles an hour. So she used our big Oldsmobile as a brake. Uh, the doors were sprung and couldn't open them up. And uh, anyway, one child had a laceration of her ear. But uh, what happened to Annette was it was what I now look upon it in hindsight as sort of a bodily earthquake. It really shook her up. She had what, you know, when she went to the doctors, the allopathic doctor said, Oh, you have a cervical sprain. And uh, Thank goodness your x-ray doesn't show any fractures, so you should be fine. Maybe a little physical therapy, that'll be great. But her symptoms did not take leave of her. She had all kinds of, uh, use a medical term, I'm a medic. I don't recommend you uh, adopt a doctor's language for more than one reason. But anyway, sleep apnea. She had points of, of tenderness around neck and shoulders. You go back to that chronic cervical sprain diagnosis. But over time, they didn't relent. She was always tired. And, uh, you know, after a while, the docs kind of thought maybe she had a little psychological problems all their heads, so to speak. But in any event, uh, we knew some uh, a student mom. She was teaching piano when we moved down to Santa Cruz. And they shared about the Nikan water system. I installed it, and as I put it together, I thought, because our water tastes a little funny, we moved in a new house. Um, I thought, gosh, I could have gotten a cheaper system at Costco, but I kept my mouth shut. You know, after a while, a husband knows when he keeps his mouth shut. But in any event, within literally three days, she was bounding up and down the stairs of our home. Her mother was living with us at that time. Is my daughter taking drugs? <laughs> She's Korean. She's really concerned about unnecessary drug taking. But anyway, it, I thought it was just a, a placebo effect. Um, we added to the sleep system, the same Japanese student mom said, how about a sleep system not knowing that she had a sleep issue? But within three nights, she awakened with, she said, I think my neck is longer. Oh. <laughs> so, well, I don't think I married a giraffe, but anyway, <laughs> uh, she could see better. She said, do you think the lights are bright in this room? They look about the same to me, but her perception of light had changed. Mm -hmm. At any event, it went on from there. Every time we added a Nikon technology, another layer of the sort of uh, disease onion came off. And, uh, you know, at first it was just a placebo effect in my mind, thinking, wow, what a powerful placebo effect. But after a while, I realized it was a real, real deal. And I began to share at the clinic. And even in Santa Cruz, where you think people are pretty broad-minded, uh, one friend of mine went to a Nikon convention and he thought it was just unbelievable. He was from South Africa and he had a lot of jet lag and he tried just magnetic insoles in his shoes. And the jet lag was, was a thing of the past for him. But uh, when I shared, and when he shared, they threatened to kick us out of the clinic. So I thought, well, I think the better part of valor here is to pray that I'll get some new clients, new customers, <laughs> not so much patients, but people interested in health and wellness. And that was the beginning of the journey. So I, I you know, tendered my resignation letter and off we went and haven't stopped since then. It, for us, it's more than a business. It's actually a calling. We just feel a moral obligation to share with people. We were helped as an answer to prayer 
other people out there praying for someone like you to share with them. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. That's powerful. Okay, so we're going to uh, open it up now. First, I'm going to stop the recording.